My name is Robert Spencer and I'm an assistant professor here at Florida State University in the Department of Earth, Ocean and Atmospheric Science. I'm a biogeochemist and so I really my research aims to understand how um, humans are impacting the carbon cycle, particularly on land and what that means for downstream receiving environments like the ocean. Well, what we've done is that we've made the first estimate of how much organic carbon is stored within glaciers and how much will be released into the sort of near-term future with glacial decline. So when people think about glaciers, they tend to think about that water uh, term. What does that mean for sea level rise? What we're actually looking at here is what goes along with that water and specifically organic carbon. Um, when you think about a glacier, you don't tend to think about anything other than just water. It's a big block of ice. But in reality, there's all sorts of things stored within that ice, and they're just often at very low concentrations. But because the water yield from glaciers is so high, especially in places where we work, like the Gulf of Alaska, the flux of some of these materials, like organic carbon, can actually be quite high along with it. And so what we're interested in is how is that going to change into the coming decades, and what does that mean for us? Um, and so specifically, one thing we know is that this glacial-derived organic carbon is very biologically labile. It's much more biologically labile to microbes at the base of the food web than, say, carbon that comes off a terrestrial landscape like a forest or a grassland. And so when this gets into downstream streams, rivers, or into the marine environment, then the microbes like eating it. I always kind of make the analogy, it's like putting a food source they really like in front of them, so they'll preferentially eat that, and they're quite happy to eat that material. They grow, and then things like zooplankton can eat them, and then that impacts fish, birds, things higher up the food web that then eat those. And so it's this cascade effect of, as we release more of this material into downstream streams, um, rivers, and coastal waters, what does that mean for things that we care about economically, like fisheries? And so that's where we're heading next with this research. Fundamentally, I think we have to understand how the modern carbon cycle works uh, if we are ever going to understand how perturbations are impacting on it. And, and so the organic carbon that's released from these glacial environments, as I mentioned, we know is very biologically labile, and so it plays a role in how that whole food web works. And so if you think of somewhere like the Gulf of Alaska, where we've done a lot of our work, it's an extremely productive fishery, and so what does the input of this glacial organic carbon mean for that fishery? And that's something we really don't have a good handle on. Uh, we obviously care about the fisheries from an economic standpoint, and so we need to get a better understanding of these things. And to do that, we need this data initially as an estimate of how much is coming in, and then to understand how that will change going forward. Um, and that's really what this study's tried to do through to about 2050.